everybody. Thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, I'm going to be talking about my project in NIM called Torrentinum. Uh, Torrentinum is a self-hosted, API-only, low-memory footprint torrent search engine and crawler. And a lot of fancy words, but basically what it does is it uses pre-configured crawlers to ingest magnet links, and in some certain cases, actually parse HTML to create those magnet links and just dumps all of that into a local SQLite database. So the reason I used NIM for this project is because I wanted something that was very surgical, very, very fast, very low impact to the user system, and also easy to distribute. I wanted something that people could just download a little executable, have it running, and uh, no ceremony, no, no fuss, no muss, everything just works. So um, let's start with looking a little bit at how the crawlers are structured. So in my NIM project that I created using Nimble, I have a folder of crawlers. So we can look at EZTV, for example. EZTV is a simple RSS. So that RSS, uh, we just parse it using uh, NIM's RSS parsing library, no big deal. And then we save it to a type that I created called torrent. So if you look at the torrent, it's just a regular old type, nothing new, nothing crazy. And this crawler is kind of on its own running automatically. So once it starts with the start crawl function, it'll do the fetch latest, it'll create all of the, the torrents on the SQLite database and then wait a bit and then do it again. We have other types of crawlers that use HTML parsing like LeetX. So LeetX actually has lists of categories. So we just iterate through every category go through each first page of that category and start mapping them. And NIM makes it really easy to do this because it has all of the primitives almost baked in. And for the HTML parsing portion of this, uh, we can actually look at the package that, that we have that you know allows us to parse the HTML, allows us to use very simple um, tag searching and tag finding maybe clean up a little bit using stream primitives. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it didn't take me a very long time to figure out how to do this. And I think that's a testament to how well NIM is suited for these kind of tasks. It just lets you get to the point and get something done and tangible and functional. It's really nice. Uh, take this, for example, we are using query selector. So if you're a web developer, this is pretty familiar. We're finding torrent detail class and then a UL with a list class finding the third list item, uh, fourth list item, and then finding the first span, and then grabbing the text. So very familiar, nothing crazy. And uh, same as the other crawler, it runs on its own volition. So you just call start crawl, and then it starts doing its thing, and then it waits 10 seconds, and then it starts doing its thing again. So if you look at, uh, let's look at the main Torrentinium file here. This is pretty interesting uh, to me. A lot of people in the NIM community told me this isn't really something that's done, but I felt like in this case, it's a really good tip because if you have a lot of uh, almost functionally equivalent classes here, uh, you're gonna hang me for using the word class, but functionally equivalent modules. And um, what happens if you just can't differentiate, you know, everything is start crawl, you know, you don't know exactly what it is you're calling. So by using import nil, you can actually specify what module you want to call start crawl for. So I think that's a nice little ergonomic win for, for your code legibility, for support and maintainability. Don't use it all the time, but know when to use it. I think it's a very important thing to do. Finally, we're using prolog and prolog cores so that uh, we can allow origins for the web application, just in case you want to do any, any kind of front end for this, you need to. Otherwise, no front end will be able to hit that the API and, and then it's not really useful, right? Uh, and then for Prolog, we, I wanted to use Prolog because um, it's a little more familiar if you're coming from, from things like Flask or ExpressJS. They seem, it's, the, the Prolog framework is very straightforward, very familiar. And again, my main goal with this project was to get something up and out and running and uh, not really interested in, in playing code golf or trying to make some, the code as terse as possible. I want something that 
a year down the line if I add a feature, I can just find my way around things easily. If you look at init database here, whenever you start the application and uh, the nuke my database flag is, is present, what it's going to do is it's going to run this function called init database. And what it does is it opens up the database file and literally drops every single table, every index, and then recreates everything from scratch. So it's an easy way to develop against because you can just run nuke my database, but also it's uh, for people who want to reset you know, their work if they ever need to do that. And again, here we're using the DB SQLite library, very tight library. It does everything that it's supposed to, no issues. So pretty robust support there. Finally, uh, let's look a little bit about how we're parsing JSON, right? So let's look at search. For search, what we do is we pass in the query parameters. So we pass in the text query. In this case, it could be something like uh, hello world. And for page, we're passing in the page. So it could be something like two, page two. And what that does, it calls the function search torrents. And search torrents, what it does is it makes, first of all, it makes sure that the page is, is greater than one, right? And uh, finally, it runs this little SQL command. And this SQL command just performs a, a dumb little search using the, the, the index and the query parameters. And then you can see here that it's adding a torrent for every result that it finds for every row in the torrent query result, it's creating a new torrent object in the result auto-generated nim return variable. So you want to take out, you want to check out uh, the return, the result variable um, right here. You uh, save this URL if you want to read a little bit more, but basically, uh, the result variable is a special variable that serves as an implicit return variable. So inside any function, when you uh, add stuff or modify this, this will be implicitly returned. So at the end of it, of your function, you don't have to say return result or return X, Y, Z. You, as long as you do something to the result variable, it, it'll automatically do that. So nice little ergonomic win, I think. So this function, again, it returns a, a sequence of torrents. And then if you come back here to the to the uh, to the action handler, you can see that we're using the JSON proc to just transform that sequence of torrents into a JSON response. And this response just automatically knows what to do with it, so it's very vanilla, very easy, right? It's not a big deal to to return JSON. Um, so the the repo is github.com slash Sergio Tapia slash Torrentinum. Uh, please take a look if you want. Uh, pull requests are very welcome if you want to add support to uh, to any of these websites that I may not have added. A lot of them are very easy to understand. So RSS, this one is RSS, this one is RSS, RSS, RSS. I think the only one that is really HTML is LeetX, but at least you have that to draw as a uh, as an example. So if you want to add support to any of your private torrent trackers, you can do that. Uh, open up a PR, and we'll figure out how to make it happen. A lot of people are already using this, and they really feel like it's a it's a great tool. Um, a lot of data hoarders they love it on the Reddit data hoarding community. Finally, I I want to talk a little bit about. Um, the make file. So if you look at the readme, we have uh, instructions on how to run the project. So we have a little simple make file that runs, uh, so you can run make depths to perform the installation. You can run make run to actually run the project, make build and make test. So that's a, I think a good setup for just general purpose. People want to develop against the app. Here's how you can run it. And uh, yeah, that, that's about it. That's all I wanted to share with you guys. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about Torrentinum. I hope it demonstrates that you don't have to build this super complicated, you know, genius level NIM project to use NIM day to day. You can use this for just run of the mill apps. You know, I'm not a very smart guy, but I like to build stuff that people actually use. And hopefully um, this, this continues to grow and people continue to use the project. 
Um, finally, uh, I just wanted to take a moment to say uh, um, I'm Sergio, I'm, I'm VP of Engineering at PAPA, and we're looking for NIM engineers. So if you're interested in joining a company that, that is doing a social good, is growing like crazy, and has Elixir, Ruby, and NIM on the list of allowed languages, uh, hit me up on LinkedIn, look me up, Sergio Tapia. Thanks a bunch.